Handheld consoles are one of the best things for the geek with ADHD. Not that it helps concentration or anything, but when you're not doing much and your head is spinning with 100 voices each screaming at you with a different subject matter of your own life, a video game does take the focus off of that for a bit. For modern devices, currently we have your regular smartphone and the Nintendo Switch. I love dedicated gaming devices, the controls are purpose built and there's usually a diverse library of games available. This is 2023. We've had a number of handheld gaming devices released in the past few years. The geek that lived in the 90s didn't have the same luck. Back then, you had a couple of choices. You could read, which is not a bad choice, but sometimes your head is not in the right place for that and sometimes you can't use a light source. The other choice you had was the Game Boy, which is a great device for what it is, but it requires direct light on the screen. There was one gaming device in 1990 that showed us gaming geeks a glimpse of the future. Backlighting, a colorful display, and 8-bit games. By 1990, the Sega Genesis was already out with its 16-bit games. But come on, if you could have a last-gen console to be handheld, that was just fantastic and basically alien technology to my kid brain. I never had a Game Gear back then. The release price of the Game Gear was $150. Corrected for inflation, that translates to $370 of today's dollars. And living in Brazil, after importation tax, I don't even want to know how much that was, but it wasn't very attainable. A few years ago, a great friend of mine gave me this amazing collection of games for the Game Gear, but I still needed a console if I wanted to play the games. So as usual, when I desire something retro, I put it in my radar and I wait. Well, one day I was looking at an auction of some used gaming stuff on Instagram and guess what came up? Yep, you guessed it, a Game Gear. It wasn't in very good condition, banged up, scratched up, the display had very low contrast and no audio. But it was inexpensive, I think about 20 bucks, so I bought it knowing that it was going to need some work. The best mod for this is swapping the display, and we're going to get to that. But before doing it, we still need to recap. The thing is that with old caps, the signals degrade and you don't even know if the new display is going to run well. And besides that, I have no audio in this Game Gear, so... I bought this capacitor kit from AliExpress. It was supposed to have all the capacitors I needed to do the recap. My plan was to swap the caps and use the Game Gear for a bit. Hopefully the original display would get some of its shine back after the recap. And when I felt like I needed another upgrade, I would do the display. Well, let's get going one step at a time. Sound's also an issue with this bad boy, no sound at all. Let's remove the main board out of the case. I don't want to burn it or anything else with the soldering iron. First, I tested the speaker and it was working. Oh, there you go. So, hopefully it was a capacitor issue as well, because there isn't anything else I can test here. And a little head count here to make sure I have everything. At this point, I realize I don't have all the caps I need in the kit. Oh well, let's do what we can and keep moving. So now, to remove the audio board from the case. Since I'm not very good at soldering, I'll clean everything as I go and I'll test as much as I can to make sure things are going well. So these are surface mounted capacitors, which mean that they don't have the legs that go across the board and I think you're supposed to solder these with hot air but I don't have one of those hot air stations, so we're going to do the best we can with the soldering iron. After I removed all the capacitors from the auxiliary board, I removed all the capacitor residue with a toothbrush and isopropyl alcohol. Now, keep in mind, this is how I did it, and I'm not saying that you should do it like this. I screwed up one of the capacitors on the audio board, but luckily, apparently it's not essential because we have sound. Hooray, one small step on revamping this game gear. I'll get another cap to replace the one I screwed up when I can, and let's keep going. Since I did one of the auxiliary boards, why not do the other? So I recapped what I could from the power board on the other side, but once again, I was missing a capacitor. Another one I need to get. 
So I tested the game gear again after the job on the power board and it seems to check out. Other work and image works as well. Now it's time to move to the main board. The big issue here is that all of these capacitors are surface mounted. And as I said in the beginning of this, I'm not the best at soldering. I wish these were passed through, but I did what I could to keep everything tidy by removing the old caps, cleaning, soldering the new capacitor in place and cleaning again. I did this several times, some of them went smoothly, others not so much, testing as much as I could along the way. And now to swap some capacitors on the other side of the display. Things seem to be going smoothly so far, but then disaster struck. A ball of melted tin fell from the soldering iron to the contacts on the ASIC. I removed what I could with the desoldering braid, and then I dragged the soldering iron to spread the rest. After messing with it for a bit, I thought it looked okay and left it at that. I was definitely fired up to swap every single capacitor on this and make it as good as possible, so on the next day, I tested that the system was still working from the previous work, and I made a quick trip to the shop to get the caps I was missing. There were only three caps left on the main board to swap. So I decided I could swap all three and test at the end. After that, it was time to test the game gear one last time before putting it back together and being done with the recap, the first part of my ultimate game gearing experience plans. This is gonna work. Oh god, yeah. Well, many times things don't go as planned, and this time was another one of those times. I don't know what did the old screen. I don't know if it was all the new power coming from the new capacitors, or maybe looking back at the footage, I can see that at one moment the main board was buckling. I could have had a screw under it or something that cracked the display. In any case, there was nothing I could do for now, I needed a new display. Luckily it was close to Christmas and Grazi asked me what I wanted for Christmas, so... <laughs> this is a brand new IPS display for the Game Gear. It comes with a controller board, a soldering lead and this guy comes attached to a glass lens. That'll make games look crisper than having the bulging scratched up original Game Gear display lens. Some of you that follow me on Twitter will remember that while I was recapping, I was excited and posting my progress along the way. With the new display swap, I decided it wasn't such a good idea. There are a lot of modifications that need to be made for it, and what if I swapped the new display in and it didn't work? How embarrassing. Well, let's get moving. The instructions for installing the new display are somewhat clear. It's actually just a part of the description in the AliExpress page I bought the thing. But yeah, could be worse. First step is to remove 9 tiny resistors. Thankfully, this was really easy. They are tiny and once you heat them up, they come out attached to the soldering iron. After this, you still have to remove a coil and some transistors. Please, don't use this video as reference because I'm not detailing every single step, but if you need help, you can hit me up on Twitter or on the comment section and I'll do the best I can. Now that I removed all the microelectronic parts, I need to remove the old display. For that, you need to remove the ribbon that attaches it. I messed up a little bit at the beginning, but checking with the soldering lead, I'm not going to need those pins for the new display. Now to remove the backlight. It's so strange, a tiny fluorescent lamp. High tech for the 90s I suppose. 
Now we need to attach the controller board for the new display. You do that with big blobs of solder on both sides. Because the fluorescent lamp takes up so much space and we removed it, there's plenty of room for the new controller board inside the original case. This is one of the bypasses I need to do. I suppose since we removed so many parts, some of them are going to need to be shorted somehow. I didn't study the Game Gear mainboard circuits diagram, so I'll trust instructions. Now we have to connect the controller board to the crystal oscillator. I believe this syncs the new display to the Game Gear so we don't have any input lag or anything like that. And there are a few more of these connections we have to make. I believe these tell the controller board to change to scan lines mode or regular mode. And now for the soldering lead. This is where I have some regrets. Originally and for lack of knowledge, I tried connecting it directly to the contacts with solder. That took a long time and it didn't work so well. Now these, these I enjoyed soldering, easy. Okay, I think I'm done. And now for the first test, and I got nothing. And it was like 3 a.m. So I packed it up and went to bed. And now, over to me to talk about this on the next morning. Alright, so, woke up today with a fresher mind. When I went to bed, I watched a couple YouTube videos and I found one that someone was doing this mod not exactly this mod but a mod they used they also used the ribbon and i realized that i was doing it wrong probably and i sh i started using like wires for all the all the little um contacts on the ribbon so i replaced uh, my solder not replaced but i placed wires over my soldering joints that look terrible I guess with the wires a little better now and I also redid the soldering on the on the upper part of the ribbon I'm going to show it to you right now and that stopped my color glitches so all I need to do now is the mechanic mods okay enough of me and let's do what I said over there mechanical mods to make everything fit snugly in the case First thing is removing the middle pin. Okay, that was easy enough. And now we need to remove parts of this shielding. This took quite some time with the pliers. I don't have appropriate cutting equipment for this, but in the end, I sort of got it. Now to remove the original plastic lens. I have this heat gun here that is way more powerful than it need to be, but I'll try to take it easy with it. All right, the original lens is out, but not without side effects. I heated the case up too much on one of the sides and it got a bit of a weird texture after it cooled down, but it's still functional. I never thought this was going to be perfect anyway. So now we need to remove part of the bezel of the old display so that the new display fits in. This was a lot more work than I imagined. I spent probably about an hour hacking at the case with a hobby knife until I finally carved enough plastic out to get the new screen to fit in. And now to close the system up, I had to do this several times. I misplaced the buttons, I needed to check on solder joints, and I just had to open and close the case three or four times to make sure everything was in the right place. And finally, here it is. And it did not disappoint. Holy crap, this looks good. It feels like you're holding a modern console. It's just fantastic. Now I can play that great library my friend so kindly gifted me and I'm so grateful for that. And I'm also very grateful to you that stayed to the end of this. I hope you enjoyed this project. Here should be more Game Gear things coming up in the future. I'm planning to get a new audio board to make sound more crispy and a new case, but for now, that was it. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment, all that good stuff, and I'll see you on the next one, my friend.